Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, oh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Oh, man, here we are. I don't know what day it is. I don't know what day this comes out. I don't know what sexual orientation I am, but we're here. I believe this is coming out January 6th or something. Wait, no, that can't be right. Mm. Oh, fuck me. January. Wow. No, January. We're in the new year. 7th. Wait, we oh, don't boy. even need to be recording one. Well, we'll have it in the day. Oh, I just realized we fucked up. Really? Yeah. Well, hey. No, we'll be back on time. Oh, no, no, because I go out again uh-huh. with Louie. Oh. But well, we could have done it on January 2nd. Are you home that day? No, I'm not. That's why we're doing it. Okay. I'm in San Francisco. Because I am back for a day on the 2nd. Well. And you leave and I leave. Yeah, plus a so day. I think if you're hearing this, folks, it's January 7th. Yeah. I think. Well. They won't care anyway, because it'll be that date. Yeah. But sometimes they get... Remember they used to get mad when we did two episodes. People oh. would be mad at A, the two episodes, and B, that it was pre-recorded. People get upset with the pre record People want it fresh. They want it to be fresh, because we're going to be talking about, you know, Baltimore, and now right. Baltimore's burned down since then. CVS. Um, what? The table might be a problem, because I can't... I got put no you, put your feet on mobility. You get a foot put it on up last there. night, and I slept in it. I know, but I got a sneaker. I'm yes. going to put a sneaker, and you, you put your boots on the table? Yeah. It's a fresh tape, but I'm, I'll probably return it anyway. You take your boots off, you put your feet on the table. Problem with this it. table is I got to return it. You got to break it down, put it back in the box. That box of fucking pieces of cardboard origami with like eight plastic squishy things and the cushion and the foam. It's going to be brutal. Here's the thing with the return. Hate I'd rather return. leave it on the sidewalk, throw it out, set fire to it, stick it in my mother's ass. I'll do anything except return something. I'd rather just eat the money. Returning is hell. And then you got to go to you got to go to FedEx. You got to get the label. Hate a label. Oh, get out of here with the label. Yeah. Label. I'm bi. I'm gay. I'm trans. Him. Her. Z. Enough with the labels. I don't like labels. No need for a label. What no. are you, an observational comic or are you a fucking food comic uh, or a boob yeah. comic? Are you a Jew? Are you a muzz? Are you gay? Are you black? Who cares? We're labelless. Yes. Libelous. Mm. Is that a word, libel? Because there's libel and libelless. Oh, yeah. That You're- is ladle. Ladle's different. That's for uh, That's juice soup. Juice, juice spin. <laughs> yeah, juice soup. Uh, juice, juice soup sounds like an Asian dish. Juice soup. Ah, juice soup. Go to Qdoba and get the juice soup. Yes. Hot and sour. I'll tell you, last night, I, you know, we, uh, you know how we are. I come home, long day of travel, just exhausted and had to confront a family member and the whole thing. <laughs> Threw on a curb Ooh. and just eased into a, a metaphorical hot bath. There you go. You know what I mean? You throw on those old Seinfelds and curves. And here's the thing. I watched Seinfeld a lot more because I started watching it when I was a kid. Mm. It's a little more repeatable. It's more... Sure. It's better. And it's on TV also. Oh, I might have to fart in the mic. Wow. That was a winner. That was a peach. That was a good one. Man, that had some <laughs> bass and treble. That was a real... The rhythm is the bass and the bass is the treble. Gloria Stefan. Chord strings. We brings. Uh, melody. Anyways, that's the whole thing, but... Uh, so I put on a curb, and I don't rewatch the curbs as much. So they're kind of fresh-ish. Yes, yes, um, like a pussy. Especially the later seasons, because the early seasons I was still a Ute, and I had them on DVD, and I would rewatch like the first three seasons I watched a lot of. Mm-hmm. But these recent seasons, also they're not as great. But they have moments. They have moments. And uh, Larry says the N word right in there. Is that right? Well, he goes, uh, "You got a bald lawyer? I can call you bald, right? Because I'm bald. Kind of like a black people say, uh, nigga." And oh, then wow. Cheryl's like, this is getting inappropriate. <laughs> and uh, you're like, boy, Larry David going for it on I love Larry. He's, HBO. He's, he's my number one. I love when he did SNL and he made that Holocaust joke and he got almost tried to get canceled. People oh, were like of mad at him. He's like, wait, what? He didn't even get it, which I loved even more than being like, oh, fuck you, blow me. He was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I'm a comedian. Yeah. Oh, I love that bald faggot. He's the best. Just yeah. the best. But uh, yeah, it was a fun ep and uh, a few good laughs in there. I can't remember the other Is that, ones. Was but. Blacks in there? Leon? 
Uh, yeah, Leon's in there. It was later. This is the second to last season. Mm-hmm. Uh, the season after the reunion. Uh-huh. Where he's getting divorced. Everyone's getting divorced. And uh, it's pretty great. Let me uh, let me run this theory <laughs> by you there. Because I feel like we got to get off on this. He uh, So I talked to Bargatze. Nate? Yeah, mm-hmm. and he said, um, "Hey, you should move to L.A." Yeah, and oh I said, "I don't want to move to L.A." And he goes, "That's why you should move there." And I said, "Oh, I hate people mean? that talk like that." Well, hold on, okay, Betty. And he goes, uh, "You got to move to L.A. because they say when you get comfortable, that's when you should change things up." Yeah. Now, what do you think about that? I agree to some degree. First of all, I think Nate read a fucking quote on a uh, you know on a balloon and was like, "I'm going to start saying this." It's a big balloon. And this is the, well, I don't want to get too personal here, but but for, Nate doesn't live in L.A. Ah, oh, he did. He lived there, but, but I hear most you. of his success did not come from there. He lived there for like six months in sure. reality. Even when he lived there, he lived thirty miles from L.A. Right. And uh, but I was just in L.A. I always think about living in L.A. It's nice, but. The road, think about how much work the road is here. The road is a nightmare if you live in L.A. Is that right? Yes. First of all, L.A. There's only one airport. Here you have three. Think of Burbank. Yeah, but Burbank, where are they going to fly to? Vegas? A couple, pl- a couple places. Maybe Phoenix. Yeah. Maybe. And uh, LAX is a nightmare. The traffic is insane in that airport. Here you got Newark, LaGuardia, JFK. Boom, boom, boom. Mm-hmm. And... Most gigs are on the eastern time zone or uh-huh. central, right. which is east or you know, an hour behind. Right. If you're in L.A., you're behind the eight ball. you got to uh-huh. fly out the night before or 5 a.m. If you're going to Cleveland, Cincinnati, Louisville, Jacksonville, Atlanta, anywhere. Yeah. Any of the big markets in the central and east, which is most markets, you got to leave at fucking 8 a.m. because you're three hours behind. If you leave at 8 a.m., you're leaving at 11 a.m. That's wow. a four and a half hour flight. Yeah, you're getting you're in right. at 5 p.m. you got to fly out Wednesday. Boy, you've really considered this. Of course. I mean... The, the lifestyle, but you got auditions there. Yep. It's like, what are we going to be? We're going to be on uh, Friends? No. What am I, Joey Tribbiani? You can't act. I can't act. It's We're not acting. Let's, what, what, what are we talking here? I'm a class act. Uh, and what, what what needs to be in LA? Like, who can't you meet? You can fly there. Sure. It's easy as pie. We go there every couple months. You oh, spend yeah. some time there. I'm not moving. I'm just saying. But but here's my here's my my clinker. Hit, stick a clinker in my asshole. See if I come. All right. Usually you don't, but I'm trying this time. I got lube and a, and a tickler. So I think he said you got to keep it interesting, basically. You got to mix it up. You got to be it uncomfortable. Fresh. That I like. I like keep it fresh, I mix like it, it up. I've thought about that. Maybe I'll move to Brooklyn. Right, right. Yeah. But here's my thing. I always do these weirdo gigs in Jersey. I was just at a, a flight school. I'm up a guy's asshole in D.C. I'm out and back upstate. I'm, I'm all over. I'm in Staten Island. I'm wherever. Philly, I just had a guy's basement in Philly, which shut down. Hopefully not my fault. That's my mixing it up. Because I, I talked to Ian Laurie. He's like, what are you doing these gigs for? They're always hell. They're weird. And I'm like, well, first of all, I get Potter out of it. We get all kinds of mm-hmm. stories and bullshit. Josh Potter. Secondly, you have no idea what you're going into. I'll take, I'm will take. i taking a ride with some guy who likes to do threesomes. And, you know, uh, he's got an app for it. And then... I'm in the middle of hell. The gig could be horrible. It could be great. Either way, you're getting paid, and you're meeting people, and you're shaking it up. You're going gay. Something happens. Also, I think some growth for us would be not to hear someone say something and be like, maybe he's right. Hmm. Growth oh. would be, oh, that's interesting. Glad that works for you. I I'm going to do whatever I want. But we're that kind of guy where someone says, well, you, what you really need to do is this. And you go, shit, should I be doing that? What if I was doing that? Why aren't I doing that? Maybe uh-huh. he's right. Maybe that guy's right. Maybe I'm wrong. Right. Where you could go, yeah, I don't know. That's good for you. Great for you. That's true. You know, you hear any advice, you go, maybe that's that's something. Because I always assume I'm dumb and wrong immediately. This is what I'm trying to work on. Because now whenever I go to L.A., whenever I go anywhere, but particularly L.A., I start to think, Maybe I could live here. Maybe I should live here. Mm-hmm. I love the I love the mountains. I love the ocean. And we've talked about it before. I often contemplate. I'm like, maybe I'm living in the wrong place. I'm so sure. anxious in the fucking train. Today's one of those days. The subway's all fucked. You're waiting for the train. New York takes it out of you. Oh, it's a rape. It's a raping. I mean, I'm waiting on the elevated train. I'm all bundled. It's fucking seven degrees. The train's not coming. Yep, yep. That and- winter, it's a cool bitch. And L.A. is just the mountain. I love L.A. I love driving through Laurel Canyon Drive from from like Hollywood into the the uh, oh, the valley. Yeah, it's it's windy. just spectacular. It's mm-hmm. a great great city. But I realized this on this trip just a day ago. I got back yesterday, 
is I have to stop doing this. Every time I go there, I'm like, I could live here. I would live in the valley right. if I could get a car. But it's no good because I'm not doing that. And it makes me think, should I live here? Should I not? You know, uh, should I mix it up? Similarly, mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm getting comfortable in New York. Maybe I should throw a wrench in things and change yep. things. I feel the yep. same way. But what would be better is if I accept it, I have a life in New York. I have a fucking apartment, a home. And then just go, I'm in L.A. right now. I love being in L.A. Yes, enjoy Instead, it. I'm giving myself the stress of, what if I moved here? I should move here. Right. We like to stress. And what makes me feel, it made me feel grateful because I was sitting there thinking about L.A. I'm like, I would live there. I could go there every night. I'm kind of in at the improv. I got Henry over here, Jonigan over there, you know. But what made me grateful because I'm like, well, I don't want to leave my therapist. I got my therapist. I love my therapist. Mm, big L. That would be devastating. And then I'm like, the seller. I'm not going to do seller. I love the. Se- I love being at the seller. Big seller. Then I think the podcast. I love coming here, doing the podcast. I'm going to give up on the podcast. Big lunch. Then I think, I love my dentist. And ah. then you start to put it together. I love, I'm like, I got a great life that I created. I love my apartment. I have the best apartment. I wouldn't trade apartments with anyone I know. Great Except pet. for Louie. Nah. But that's not an apartment. It's a home. Sure. And Two daughters, though. Yeah, I wouldn't want. Well, you don't have to take the daughters. You just oh, get the home. I'll take the daughters. Yeah, the dog can. Uh, the dog can die. The <laughs> daughters can whatever. But anyways, you start to realize, wow, I have a pretty great life. Yeah. I love a story. I love my apartment. I love my fucking. I just went through the dentist, the therapist, the podcast, yep, yep. the seller, you, me, Kramer, the butler, and so uh, we got pretty good. <clears throat> and. You can always go to L.A. You can always go. L.A.'s like that hot skank. You fuck a bunch and you go, man, maybe I really like this gal. Maybe I'll take her uh, take her arm in marriage or whatever the hell. And then you you hang out with her for 17 hours. You go, oh, I just like fucking her. Yes. I don't want to live here. This is just a Ritz. Huh? This is just a cracker. Remember the Eddie Murphy <laughs> bit? This is a regular cracker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought you had a Ritz. I thought you were doing regarding Henry. No. The never. Ritz. Um, but yeah, I have this thing now, too, where I have... I got family in Seattle, so every time I get close to L.A., I go, I go to L.A., but I'm like, well, shouldn't I pop to Seattle? What's mm. more important, the business or the family? Ah, and then the you got to go, now I got to go to both. Then before you know it, I'm like, I got to get a place in fucking Utah so I can shoot to one to the other. Right. It's all a lot of stress. And this, I think, is stressful with comedy, and we've talked about this before, is the business is all, the, the jobs are always out in front. You always have to be looking at your calendar. Always. Where regular people or reg- i shouldn't say regular people that makes it sound like we're fucking majority. superheroes but the majority <laughs> of people have a job you get a job and it, it comes with its own depressing thing oh oh yeah the girlfriend's miserable but you get a job and you go all right i work here i go to work here and i have a vacation day there and there but our thing is like you're always looking at the count all right march i gotta start booking march yeah. if i don't book march i'm not gonna be able to pay april rent right then you start looking at april then you start thinking okay we're gonna go back there 14 months from now so then you're talking about 14 months from now so you're always living in the future. Yes. You send your avails for next week, your avails for next month. Then you're like, you got to book your flight for two weeks from now. Then you got to book your flight for three weeks from now. So Not your mind is bits. always out in the future. Then you're like, I'm taping my special. I got to have new, spe- new right. bits by then. Right. Because I, I got to come around back to this market mm-hmm. in 12 months. So there's a lot of looking into the future when the real life is in the present, but it's hard. You get taken out of the present. True. The present's tough. They always say, live in the now. I'm like, well, is this the now or is that the now? Is the now gone? Is the, what's now? Now it, sucks. Now it's it's fleeting. Yes, it's fleeting, but we're looking in the future, but better than looking in the past over and over. Well, here's what you I You don't want to be that guy. I came up with this analogy on my own when I was a teen. I think it's pretty brilliant. Uh, all right. I'm, I'm ready. Uh, ma- analogy or metaphor. I always think the windshield... I might mean, have said this in the podcast years ago. The windshield of the car is a great metaphor mm. because you have these three devices for looking in the, pa- in the back. Uh-huh. There's, a, there's three rear view mirrors. But if you stare at the rear view mirror, you're going to crash because uh-huh. it's all right in front of you. Ooh, so you like got to be looking at the front, but you got to have options to look. Uh-huh. Tom Petty had a great lyric, you can look back, but it's best not to stare. Ooh, he's he good. Died. But the windshield thing, I think, is something because it's grand. You can, it's all out there, and it's beautiful if you're looking, but occasionally you got to glance up and go, oh, shit, there's a fucking Milky Way behind me. Right. Milky Way, that didn't make sense. Well, what about a bicycle? Milk truck, I mean. You're all windshield. I mean, you, you're you the windshield. There's no mirror even. Some people have those mirrors. Ah, right. Those nerds in the dweebs. city. Yeah, yeah Fucking yeah. losers. Putting our own mirror on. Blow nice me. Nice helmet, you fucking, you know what. Get a job, dickless. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. But you know what I'm saying. I don't know. Yeah, the bike is something, but the windshield is so sprawling. It, yeah. makes, it, it makes for a good metaphor. I like it. Um, Except when the bird shit on it. That there you go. That's a that's that that's, guy can add to the metaphor. You got a bug. It's a bad day. Yeah, yeah. The rain, the rain's jizzing on you. Every once in a while, 
Someone comes on a windshield, I'm sure, somewhere. Sure, or a hobo does it with the squeegee, and you got to give him half a nickel. But Giuliani, get rid of him. Ah, uh-huh. broken window theory. First, first class guy. <laughs> uh, um, but any jizz, <clears throat> I was out there in L.A., and because uh, we, we went and did New Mexico. You got that right. Which was, uh, what a time. Great weekend, great club, great staff, great food, great hang. Great hang. I mean, that was like, we talked about it then. Maybe the best weekend of my entire comedy career. I'm what? Say. I'm saying it pound for pound, I'm saying. I don't know. The Louis special's up there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm talking headlining road I weekend see. thing. I but see. the Louis stuff is amazing. But even that comes with a little bit of stress. And you don't get sure. to really stretch your legs. It's not our fans. That's true. Hear me. Ooh, that was weird. We touched fingers. That should be a <laughs> gif right there. Uh, is it gif or gif? I, I think, think it's gif, but everyone says gif. I think that's a peanut butter. Choosy moms. That's right. What does I that believe mean, choosy. Slutty. Well, choosy means you know uh, they they choose. <laughs> They're like uh, picky. Oh, picky! But I think they made it up. Did they? Choosy moms choose Jif? Maybe not. It's got a good ring. I don't know. Nuva. Choosy. All right. New Juicy. Mm. Yeah, boy. Uh, but anyways, pound for pound. So first of all, it's New Mexico. The flight sucked, but there was no media. It was Friday, Saturday yeah. only. No media. Didn't have to wake up. They paid us. Hand- they paid us, quite frankly, about double what I get most places. Sure. We're co-headlines. We're only doing, what, 35 minutes. Yep. So you could still stretch and have some fun, but not have to fucking do all the time. Here, here. And we did a live podcast, which was fun. We had Tuesdays. The, we had all fans there, ton of fans. And not a lot, a lot of light room. I mean, we had people there. And it was never like, oh, this one's going to be tough. There's eight people out there. No, there were people. And the hotel was killer. Yep. And uh, great company, great hang, in and out. Gambled quite a bit. We had a lot of fun gambling. I lost a good amount of money on the uh, Colby Covington fight. Yeah, I lost some money, too. Well, my, I put 25. I just picked a guy. I was like, because he was the biggest underdog, Mike Perry. Oh, and yeah. he sounded like a nice, Honky. you know, ham and ham and tomatoes. What is it? Not ham Meat and egger. Potatoes. Meat and potatoes. Ham and eggers. Be- he what turned out to be a ham and egger. What's a ham and egger? Um, egger rigged. Ham and egg. Er. Er. That's Dr. Seuss. Yeah. Well, it's uh, I learned it from Rocky and. I think Bobby Heenan used to say it on WWF. Ham and egg, sounds good. Yeah, I think that's like a, you can't afford much. You're kind of shitty. Oh. You eat ham and eggs because you oh. stink. Oh, weird. I thought ham and eggs was top notch. You know, you don't eat, you know, kicks. What's your favorite cereal? Oh, that's a tough one. I hate to be this guy, but as you get older, you know, you start out with the cinnamon toast, which is like heroin, and then mm-hmm. you gotta keep, you gotta wean off of that because it's too much sugar. So I like a good, clean honey nut. Wow. Cheerio. I'm a, I always love Frosted Flakes and Fruit Loops. Those are my two favorites. I like Frosted Flakes, but it just turns into a big miscarriage after four minutes. You can't get a hold of that thing. Well, I like the mush. I like oh, the crunch like and the, the mush. Okay. I like both. I like half crunch and half mush. In yeah. fact, I think I might have some Frosted Flakes soon. Oh, I love I love cereal, and it's bad for you because it's all sugar and, and uh, wheat or whatever the hell those Milk are. is bad. Milk is good. Milk is bad. Milk is bad? Milk's bad. I don't Almond know. Almond milk, good. Ah. Nut milk is good. Oat? Oat milk is good. Goat? Cow milk. Goat is the greatest of all time milk. Is goat the goat? <laughs> no, no, I think oh. it's bad. I think goat might be okay, but cow is bad, mm. I know, and... But who knows? It'll change before the end of this podcast. The cow took a real turn. When I was a kid, the cow was, you know, at milk and steak and beef and f- leather, and now it's like, oh, it's evil. No, but the cow, the steak got good. The uh, milk got bad, but the steak got good. Uh, the milk went sour. Yeah, but the beef got better. People are like, beef is fine. Don't worry about your cholesterol. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about fat. Beef is in. Beef is in. Milk is out. What is Wagyu? Wagyu. Wagyu beef. I think it's ragu. It's a sauce. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's an Italian thing. I'm talking about Wagyu beef. I think it's Asian. I, I know Kobe. He's a decent dribbler. Yeah. But I'm talking about Wagyu. It's all, It's. I think it's Korean. Hmm. I don't know anything about Korea. I know there's two of them. Yeah. One's good, a, one's bad. And then there's Kim Jong-un and then Kim Jong-il. Yeah. A couple a of, and ills. A lot of bad haircuts and real <laughs> mean people. He's a fat little nugget, isn't he? Yeah, he's a piece of shit. He looks like a like a lesbian. Uh, Alexa, what is Wagyu beef? Wagyu is one of the four Japanese breeds of beef cattle. It's 
All right, this All is too right, long. Too long. Right, we yes. got a dead air here, but it's Japanese beef. Any I kind of wrong. the three Japanese beefs. Okay. So, uh, Wagyu, I guess. Hey, shut up. Or give it a rest. She's like that girl you talk to in the audience. Like, where are you from? She's like, well, actually, I was born in Nairobi, and then I grew up in Minnesota. You're like, hey! Yeah, shut your a- Wagyu, you fucking <laughs> goo head. <laughs> uh, anywho, what, any Wagyu. Uh-huh. What are we talking about? I don't even know what we're talking about here. Beef, the cow is bad. Oh, cereal. Oh, the cereal. But that started Killer. when we started talking about New Mexico, how great yeah, that was. Yeah. I'm a Frosted Flake guy and a Fruit Loop, and I like the milk after Fruit Loops is oh, really something. That pink milk. Yeah, a little placenta. Yeah, get it right in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about an Apple Jack? I liked Apple Jacks when I was a youth, but I haven't had one in a long time. It's, no, it's no Fruit Loop. No. It's, it's a Fruit Loop, but it's not Fruit Loops. Yeah. You know what's underrated, I think, are Smacks. No, I never had smacks. Oh, there's a little little honey pot, little gash uh, hatchet wound. They look like cunts. Oh, okay. Well, I like cunts a lot. Well, then you'll like this. <laughs> All right, I'll try it. That should be the ad, by the way. <laughs> if you like cunts, you're gonna love. What is it called again? Smacks. Smacks. Which maybe is weird with the drug thing. Yeah, smack. Yeah. Crank, mm. smack, crank. Oh yeah, crank. Crank is a good one. Crank. Trucker crank. Hmm. I never had that either. That's what they. That's a different kind of cereal. That's what they're doing uh, out on the road and then fucking dirty prostitutes. Well, anywho, yeah. New Mexico was really something. Very fun. Great time. That roulette wheel. We had it popping Woo-wee! off for a minute there. Uh-huh. I mean, we really had some fun. I mean, I had like what did I hit like twelve hands oh, in a row there? More, I think more. It was a lot. I just kept hitting. Yeah, you were rolling. And I gave it all back. Back and to the then, kids. Uh, oh, how about this? So you left for this. So we went. We went to cash our chips, and this is where it gets dangerous because you have some chips left. I had fifty bucks in chips, or mm-hmm. like sixty-two bucks, but two twenty-five dollar chips, the greens. Ah, yes, AA. Which I thought this was funny, by the way. Every time someone would hit big on roulette, they'd say, "I'll take, uh, give me one black." That's like the hundred dollar chip, right? I thought it was funny. I, I traded him forty dollars of chips. I go, and then uh, give me one black. Okay. And the guy was like, "What?" And I was like, "Yeah, it's a bit. That's a joke. Keep your towel on." A lot of jokes. <laughs> Oh, they hate us. Well, I had—I think I summed it up pretty good. Because we're there gambling for fun. We have money. Yes. And we're gambling as a goof. Right. We're like, well, I just lost more money. Woo! Yes, a, a GG. They have no money. Right, a goof gamble. They're gambling trying to make money. They're trying to earn money. Child support. Yeah, they're losing money they don't have. Right. We're losing money that we got a little extra money. Yeah. I'm not saying we're rich. No, but we're working there that weekend. We're getting paid. So even if we lost a couple grand, yes. we're leaving with money. Yes. You know? Exactly. So we're being silly, and they were kind of miserable and losing. We're going, oh, fuck you, whatever. And yeah. it's kind of like psychological. That's probably why we're winning. Oh, ah. we don't care. It's like Red finally gets accepted his uh, parole or whatever. Right, right. Because he's like, stamp your papers, Sonny Boy. We were ah. telling the dealer to stamp his papers. Great analogy. Thank you. Doesn't quite add up, but it's no, fun. No, 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 because he didn't care anymore. You know, it's like the same with comedy. You go up there, you go, ah, blow me. Or like, the, like a beautiful woman. You ever talk to a girl, you're like, I got no shot with her, and it's going better than if you were trying to hit on her. I'm so much better with women now. I see women, I go, that's great, that's really interesting, because I'm actually interested now. Yes. Back then, you're just trying to get laid. So right. she's talking, you're going, oh, 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 just shut up and fuck me. Say the right thing, say the right thing. But now if I'm talking to a woman, I'm like, that's really interesting, I never thought of that before, because I'm not thinking about fucking her. But would you think you'd have a better shot of getting laid now? Yeah, but if they didn't, it know. would change. If if someone was like, if my wife was like, take your ring, on, I want to just give you a nice. Well, that surprise. would change everything. Go out for three months and get laid. But yeah, now the clock is on. Once again. I'm trying, so now you're pressured. Yeah, if I could have this, should be a pill. Aha! Uh-huh. They should sell this as a pill. A pill that makes you think you're talking to a lesbian, or make you Ooh. feel like you're married, Ooh. or can give you the confidence of it. Because if I'm talking to a lesbian when I was single, or if she was married when I was single, by the way, yeah. I would be single talking to a married woman. I'd be like, oh, that's really great. And I'd be cracking jokes and real fun. I like it. Because all the pressure's not there. Yeah, the dyke pill. Yeah, but when I was single talking to a single, forget about it. I was like, I look like Jay Fox on a winter's day. Little Muhammad Ali. Yeah, just shaking like a leaf and going, oh, yeah. my dad's just... It's funny. And when I like a gal or, you know, when I'm hitting on a lady, I feel like I'm bombing the whole time. Even if it's not going badly, I just feel like they hate me, they hate me, abort, get out. Pull out. This is bad. 
Those but, come later, the abortion and the pullout. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, but it could be going fine, and I'm just freaking out so bad that I just go, I gotta get out of here. I'm sorry, I, I took your time, madam. Yeah, I think we might have talked about this before, where everything I look back so often on relationships with women that I wasn't dating. I just was talking. I was like, oh, I totally could have had sex. With oh women. yeah, like so many. Like I look through old photos, and there's like a girl sitting on my lap and kiss me on the cheek, and I'm like, what was I doing? How did oh. I not have sex? That's like. So insane. But I was like, she hates me. No one likes me. Yeah, same. I told you there was that story. The night I shit in the shoe, I was at the bar talking to this girl, and Cantor was bartender. And yeah. I guess I just kept being like, I was in a blackout, but I kept being like, you hate me. You hate me. And then she went to the bathroom. And he was like, what are you doing? She likes you. That's why she's sitting here. She's sitting with you talking to you. Yeah. And then she came back, and I was like, you love me. And so I just went from <laughs> one extreme to the other. Same same feeling, but I just switched the uh, verb. Right, right. Did she buy it? Well, I shit in her shoe, so it oh, kind of fucked it up. Well, you got back to the place. Yeah, I got in there. Like again, I'm like, I, I could have been done it. slamming these dames if I hadn't been shitting in their, you know, footwear. I think you might have a shoe thing. What do you mean? Well, you have a whole bit about how you like women's heels, and you want to lick a shoe. You want to put a high heel up your asshole. Yes, you yes. want to jizz in a shoe. But what makes you think I have a shoe thing? <laughs> And then, but you shit in a shoe too, so that's kind of <laughs> now we're combining bodily fluids. And then you know, you were in a blackout, so I feel like it was kind of like your your lizard brain was going, you know? Right. But why didn't I pull out a stiletto? I pulled out a fucking Nike high top. I'm sure you couldn't find a stiletto. No stiletto. It was like a girl at a bar. Like I don't care if she's a big fat pig. You're like <laughs> right. she's there. I just need a shoe. Yes. But I didn't fuck the shoe. I'm with you on the shoe thing. I love a good shoe, a good arch, a nice toe to come in or put in your ass, whatever is your pleasure. Sure. But I think the shitting thing was that's a separate but situation. I'm not even saying it's sexual. I just think it's a shoe thing. Oh, in general. It a general General Shu. Ah, General Shu, another Asian guy. That's right. He's Great. taking over for Kim Jong. <laughs> General uh, General So's chicken. General Shu, General Sue. Yeah. General Poo is what mm. I did in the shoe. Poo poo platter. Dr. Seuss. Uh -huh. Dr. Shoes. Anti Semite. Oh, yeah. Oh, hated the heat. Wow, and he's in the business. Well, that was back when the business was uh, less hebe. Oh, they have had the business for quite some time. Ah, whoa. Disney was not a fan as well of yeah, the uh, true. uncircumcised gents. That's true. Also, I think Raul Dahl, I've heard. Who wrote Chocolate Factory? Willy Wonka. He's in it. Oh. The writer. There's Ram Dass. And no, there's... That's, a, that's like a DMT weirdo. Yeah, there's Raphael. Wait, Raul. There's Ram Raul. Oh, Raul. Salvador Dali. I know who you're talking about the guy with the mustache. I think it, no, no, no. That's Dali. That's Dali. I think it's I think it's Raul Dahl. Yeah, I think that makes sense. He yeah. was an anti-Semite as well. No kidding, boy. Yeah. A lot of them. No Jews allowed in that chocolate fact. By the way, that devil next door. I finally watched the end of it. It's amazing. Oh yeah, amazing. Well done picture they got going on there. Hey folks, got to tell you about a new sponsor, Native Deodorant. We love these guys. Are you looking for a natural deodorant? You don't want to be rubbing a bunch of chemicals up there in that uh, arm taint. So get some, uh, get some natural. Feel better, smell better. All right. Uh, Native creates safe, simple, effective products, and it has over eight thousand five star reviews. So you know it works. Wow, that's impressive. I think we have eight thousand negative reviews. Check it out. Doesn't contain any aluminum, parabens, or talc. You gotta hate talc. It's filled with ingredients found in nature, coconut oil, tapioca starch, shea butter to moisturize. That sounds all right. Less is more with Native. They have fewer, simpler ingredients that you actually know. Get on it. I gave some to the lady. She's rubbing all over her tootsies and armpits and queefs and quaffs and crevasses. Good times. Get on that Native. It's got something for everyone. Native comes in a wide array for men and women. Coconut and vanilla, lavender and rose, cucumber and mint. Rosemary and thyme. Remember that one? Uh, and just for the holidays, they're throwing in a candy scent. Ooh, that's good for the kids. Order yours now and see if it compares to your regular deodorant. There's no risk to try. Native has free shipping and free returns in the U.S. Sorry, Canucks. For 20% off your first purchase, visit Native Deodorant and use code TUESDAYS during checkout. NativeDeodorant.com and use code TUESDAYS at checkout. NativeDeodorant.com. Use code TUESDAYS during checkout. Thank you. Take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live.
But I went to, uh, so I went from New Mexico to L.A. Now, you had the 4 a.m. flight out Duh! or something. 4 a.m. pickup, 6.30 uh, flight. I forgot this part. So I, th- I started telling the story, and we got all distracted. So I had the $25 chips. Then we're going to return them. I was like, wait a minute. Why am I cashing these in? They're chips. Let's go play them. So we go back to the roulette wheel, but the roulette wheel was packed. Yes. And had a couple audience members. Now, you don't want to be talking to people that just saw you bomb. No, that's the worst. Not that I bombed, but I just didn't love the last show. It's neither here nor there. So I was like, let's go to the high stakes blackjack. Now, in New Mexico, high stakes blackjack is 25 bucks a hand. Pretty good. In Vegas and Mohegan Sun, that's the minimum. Exactly. But there, it's the uh, high, high limit. So I go there. The table's open. I sit down. Like, I'll play two hands of blackjack. Now, they got funky blackjack there. Funky. If you remember. They don't oh, deal your cool. hand up. They deal your hand face down. That's right. And then you're looking at it. And then you have to do hand signals to get a hit or not. Mm. And then they just have to believe what you have. It's yeah, what crazy. am I, a pitcher? I don't know all the moves. It's odd. Helen Keller over here. And they kind of acted like I was crazy. They, they did a little. They were like, you got to do this if, if you want a hand. I'm like, I've never seen this in my life. Why, yeah. are cards, why am I touching cards at all? Right. <laughs> anyway, then some drunk fucking half retard came over. <laughs> oh, Remember that guy? Yeah, yeah, that's my agent. He came over, and then he just sidled up next to you and started commenting on my hand. Yep. And he's like, if you want to split two, split twos. What are you, what are you listening to them for? Why would you ask them? Well, why would I have to talk to you? I know. I'm like, why? I hate people that just join you. Well, and also, there's no getting rid of him because he, he kept talking. You're trying to be polite, so he's he's abusing your politeness. And he walked away with us. Like now we're yes, just with him. Yes. And then under my breath, I was like, how do we get this fucking guy? And yeah. I think he might have heard that ah. because cut to. Eight hours later, you and Sarah have gone off riding fences. Yeah, I'm we, just waking dating. up. And I come down to go cash in my remaining chips. Mm-hmm. And then once again, I'm like, maybe I'll throw them on the roulette wheel. But the roulette wheel was closed, fortunately. It hadn't opened yet because yep. it's 8 o'clock in the morning or whatever. And that guy walked by me. Now, that was midnight when we were there. Oh, yeah. So it's been eight hours. He's in the same. I don't think he went to bed. No. And he walks by, and I hear him say, kill yourself. Oh, that was the guy. That was the guy. Oh. So I don't know if he said, if he was talking to himself or if he was talking to me, because we, we made eye contact. Holy hell. So I think he might have heard what I said under my breath. I think he might have heard you there, Fatty. Or maybe he just hated me or something, but I heard a distinct, kill yourself. Wow. Now, he might have been like, Ted, you've been here for eight hours, kill yourself. Sure. But that guy was going all night long. And oh, yeah. He was just wandering around. And it's a sad state of affairs out was there. Was he a uh, little blotto, shithouse, wasted? He didn't wasted? seem like he was stumbling or anything. Huh. He was just kind of wandering around, probably lost all his money, didn't want to go home. He had a bit of a screw loose. Like, he was a little bit of oddball kook. Yeah, I didn't see his screws, but I assumed they were loose. They were loose. Uh, but he used a driver. I got the uh, ride to the airport. I go to the airport, and I had my favorite thing happen, and I'm sure we've talked about this situation before when you you see your you know your seat number 10a or whatever it is Mm -hmm. and you can you start to see it in the distance yeah and you start doing the math because you can't see the numbers but you're counting chairs you're like someone's in my seat right now Uh, i get excited for it why because it's fun to kick someone out when you're in the right it feels good oh i don't have that you go up i go uh excuse me sir but uh, and it's nice to assert myself i feel good sure and i go i believe uh you're in my seat now there's three seats and the one next to him the middle seat's open so he just stands up to let me in, and I sit down in the seat he's sitting in. His newspaper's tucked in, and his bag's underneath the chair in front of him, and I just sit down. <laughs> and then I realize I can feel his presence, and I like look up, and he's standing there like, over me. And I was looking back, and I'm like, what? And he's like, what are you doing? Huh? And I was like, no, this is my seat. Right. And he's like, no, no, I'm the aisle. Oh. And I was like, okay, well, you, maybe you're that aisle? I don't know. And because someone was sitting in that seat. So someone uh-huh. was sitting in his seat. Did you go, hey, fatty, look at this. Well, yeah, ticket. I pulled up my phone. I was like, 10, 10 A. And he's like, oh. And I'm like, that's 10 C. Well, I was in D and he was in C, whatever. Uh-huh. I was like, that's this is D. And he's like, oh, shit. And then he's like, turns to that guy and tells him he's in his seat. Now, this guy, this is very bizarre to me, was with his wife. She had the window seat. They just left the middle seat open. Mm. Like, he thought he was going to get away with that. Oh, come on. And the guy's like, so he moved to that seat, and he's like, can I get my suitcase and newspaper? So he had to, like, pull all his shit out, and I just kind of stood there. I felt good. Yeah. Uh, I was like, beat it, you fucking chooch. This is my seat. You know what drives me crazy on these flights? They do this every time. Is uh, when they go, you go, hey, I'm in there. You know, like, I got I to gotta slide in. And the guy, I'm in the aisle. So he goes, hey, I got to slide to the window. And I go, sure, sure. And uh, no, wait, I fucked it up. 
you got to get in, and the guy just stands there like he's got to get to the window. I'm in the aisle. Uh-huh. Sorry. So, ah, man, I might have fucked that up again. Hold on. What do you say when you see things? <laughs> The place to be. Some people see things as they are and ask why. Oh, I got it. Okay. So I'm in the aisle, and they want to get in. So they just stand there at the seat, and I stand up, and they're just standing there. And I'm like, I have three inches to put my legs around and get out of this row. Oh, I see. But they don't move out of the way to let me out of the row. They don't let you out of the row. I see what you mean. Yes, that's frustrating. Sorry, I'm gay. I had this happen on the flight to... uh, Wait, where was I going? To L.A. Oh, so this is the flight. Sorry, I messed up my flights. I've flown four times. That happened on the we're way today. to Atlanta. Oh, well, well, I'm all fucked up. I flew. I woke up at 4 a.m. yesterday, flew from L.A. to here, and I'm leaving tomorrow for fucking two and a half weeks to Houston. Uh-huh. I'm home for 20 hours. Yikes. Anywho, so the flight to... That was the flight to Atlanta where the guy was sitting in my seat because I was with Sarah on that one. The New Mexico to L.A. flight. Now, this is kooky. I'm sitting, I got the aisle, I'm first class, upgrade, because it's these short flights, I got upgrades, which is nice. Yeah. So I'm in row 2C, which is the aisle, front, first class, and no one's sitting next to me. I'm like, I think I'm going to get a first class with no one next to me. That's the ultimate victory. Big Vic. Then I'm reading my book, and I just hear loud noises coming from the jetway, just Mm -hmm. like, ah, ah, woo, woo, ah, and it's just loud. It sounds like commotion. So I'm like, what's with the commotion? Uh-huh. It's like four middle-aged women, middle-aged, like, oh, maybe mid-40s, okay. late 40s, and they're boozed up. This is a noon flight. And oh, they're boy. just cackling, well, oh, wow, well, that's because I don't know. Ah! And it's just that loud mm. four drunk people, not saying women, but men or women. Sure. Women have a higher pitch. It's a toxic femininity. It's a loud pitch. Yeah. Oh, ah! And I'm like, oh, God. And one of them comes up, and she goes, I'm in that seat. I'm in that. She's hammered. I'm in that. She's good looking. Okay. But she's like, I'm in that seat, but I'm going to go socialize first. Oh, uh, boy. And I went, okay. And then uh, second passes, maybe two Mississippis, and she just starts stepping over me. Hmm. And I go, whoa, 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 Jesus Christ. Like, she's like legs, like, and she's got a split oh, over wow. me. Facing or not facing? Facing. Ooh. And I'm going, what the fuck? I go, hey, I, I would have got up. And she's like, nah, nah, this is what happens when you drink in the morning. And then she swings her leg, kind of wow. kicks me and like, falls into the seat. But she had just said she was going to go socialize. Yeah. That's why I didn't get up. Right. But I think it's psychotic to step over a person when they're awake. Yeah. If they're asleep, you're like, I got to go to the bathroom. I don't want to wake them up. Right. But the flight hasn't left yet. Like, why are you stepping? Oh, like, just give me a second. I'll just yeah, move. Yeah, that's the booze. And that's the good looking lady talking. You know, I can do what I want. Get out of my way. And you won't mind if I straddle your fat ass. Yeah, but I minded and uh, or moaned. What's the, ma- mm, what's the past tense of mind? Uh, goose, geese, moose. I don't know. What is mind? I minded. I, I was minded. I was minding my business. I yeah. minded my business. That Land sounds mind. weird, doesn't it? Minded. Yeah. It does. Doesn't sound right. Mend, mind, moaned, manned. I moaned my business. Yeah, that's no good. I minded my business. I think it's minded. Minding my business sounds right. Yeah. I well, think whatever. Minded. Call Maybe in. I can say I was minding my business. Mm. I was mind. Anyways, I minded and mind my business. But she steps over. Then she kind of do the thing when she talked to me. She was like, um, "Oh boy, it was last night was a nightmare." Uh, and I did a good job of just looking up my book and being like, ah, oh, this sucks. And yeah. going back to the book, and she kind of got the hint, which was nice. Yeah. Then she's like dinging on her phone until the last possible second. Then we're on the flight. And you could, she's doing that like aggressive, can't get comfortable. You know, when you're like, oh, uh, <sighs> yeah, like an eight year old. Uh, like a lot of flops and flips. And then she starts looking at her phone and she starts sobbing. Oh. For like 45 minutes straight. I just hear. And then she's ordering, uh, what's the arm? Uh, mimosas. She's ordering oh, mimosas the whole flight. Oh, boy. And she's just going. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> and it's that weird thing where you're like, it's a, another human in me. Should I be sure. like, you okay? But I don't want to get stuck. She's a drunk. I don't want to get stuck talking to this woman. Yeah, not to bring it all back around, but you could have had sex with her. There's mm. a lot of hormones flying. Mm. She's older. She's horny. She's uh, sad. Uh, sad and crying. Yeah, I think you made a move. 
You would have had a makeout in first class. Maybe a makeout, but she was with three friends and we were getting to LA. So I don't know if it, what, a sex thing, but maybe I could have got a, a a first class makeout. Oh, uh, that's what I'm saying. Like I think if you if, but if you were at a bar with her and this was all going down, it'd be over. I've had that happen before where I was the shoulder to cry on and the shoulder becomes the cock. Yes, shoulder cock. The shoulder becomes the cock. Put that on a bumper sticker. I like it. But uh You don't want to cry on the cock though. I'd kind of be into it, depending on the cause of the tears. I guess. Maybe if you're gagging a lady. Uh, I'm not into a gag. I'm not either, but, uh, you know, what else would maybe... It's so big. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too big to suck. Yeah. <laughs> um, that'd be a good way to get out of blowing somebody. Oh. Because I think I have that with the small mouth. Yeah, you got something. Type you, two. Oh, yeah. Like if a nice man pulled out a cock i'd be like i'm it's, i'd cry and be like it's too small i'm gonna I'm try all, that next time take your cock out yeah all right we're back we had to hey. edit that uh it did not fit uh um, wide lens but anyway she kept crying and then uh i kind of overheard a little bit when we landed because their phone was off airplane mode she's like i just cried for 45 straight minutes <laughs> and she's like if they can't if they can't deal we did our best if they can't deal with it they're gonna have to deal with it okay and i'll just i just love you and i oh, it was like one of those ones. Oh boy then i got off the plane and then i'm in la then i'm in fabulous sunny la and uh, I just love it out there. You gotta love L.A. Had some great hangs at a spot at the Improv. I did Ryan Sickler's podcast. Keep mm. an ear out for this one, folks. Honeydew, Honeydew, Honey and uh, had never met him, and met him, and couldn't have been nicer. And this show, I think it might be the defining shit shoe story. Oh, you got it on wax. I think. Well, it's, I've been told it a lot because I told it on Rogan. I've told it on Burt, so I apologize to people. Jeez, you're milking this shoe shit. Well, people want to know. <laughs> they kept ringing the bell. <laughs> uh, people want to know about the shoe shit. Uh, and then we talked about Last Comic Stick because it's all about your worst moments in life or lowest points of coming back or whatever. So we talked sobriety. We talked shitting in the shoe. We talked my parents. We talked everything. I think, it, I think people are going to really enjoy this. And he's a good laugher. That's oh, just nice. Oh, that helps. It's huge. Because you're killing. Because otherwise, you're just. It, it turns a sad story into a funny story. Yes, yes. I, I did that crab feast. You ever hear that? Jay no. Larson. Oh, yeah. He used to do a show with him. Yeah, he was the other guy. Oh, I see. So I did that crab feast, <clears throat> and they're like, just, you know, we're going to tell some stories. And I went in, and I sat at a card table with these two chooches, great guys. And they go, uh, all right, what do you got? And I was like, oh, shit. So I told us uh, like a 12 minute story, poured my heart out. All right, what else you got? I, it was brutal. It was so tough. I mean, I got all the stories out, but it was you were on. Like, they didn't give you anything. Right, right. They just said, tell the story. And you're like, for 10 minutes, you're just like, here it is. They're going, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then another 10 minutes, here's another story. And oh, it took boy. The whole, it was horrible. You got to give. And those you guys, gotta give. he was given. Honeydew was given. And the producers, I could hear them laughing. It was just a success. Felt really good. And uh, then I went and met Annie Letterman, did her podcast. Oh, nice. And that was fun, too. Uh, What's her theme? I don't know if she has a theme. She's got shirtless cowboys behind you. You sit mm. on like a little uh, outside patio furniture, and you kind of right. just you kind of just wrap. Ah, uh, you chop it up. We chopped it up. That was fun. Then I went over and met up with old pal Tommy John again Ooh, at the V Cut. V Cut, the cigar bar next to the Improv. I was doing a spot at the Improv, and I didn't tell too many Tuesdays. I should have announced it, I guess. Got to announce. But I was going low profile, and I'm coming back there headlining March 16th at the Belly Room. Ooh. So come to that. That's going to be a full set. This is just a spot. And sometimes, you know, when you're just doing a spot, I don't want the pressure of fans, and did I do I this? You. Have I done this? And you know what I mean? You feel weird. So I'm like, I'll just go in, quietly do my set, get paid. Met up with John again, and uh, we had a great hang. Oh, good. Great catching up. Nick Novicki was there, chatted with him for a little while. Nice. Uh, and uh, just one of those good trips. Saw Andy Hendrickson. We had dinner and just chatted it up. Had a good uh, hang with Hendrickson. Uh-huh. Good hang with John again. Missed Henry. It was a bummer. Mm. But uh, And John again, good news, comedy fans. He's jumping back into comedy. It's about goddamn time. He's one of the best. One of the best uh, ever, I would say. Wow. And, uh, big, big fan big influence ever. good friend what about ralphie may i mean don't you think anyone that's great now is one of the best ever ah uh, yeah because you gotta be it's a different level different level i mean like you're pumping more out you oh, yeah. know more we're we gonna say paul riser's better than tommy jonigan you know what no, i mean I'm like no, come on no, no. cuter and he's got three albums worth of stuff that's true, and it's all killer. I mean, all I'm a killer. big fan of the John. So uh, check out those albums, and uh, he's back. And Ooh. you can tell 
he was uh, he was itching. Oh, good. Because I went up. I'm doing all new. I'm killing. You could tell he was like, boy, I gotta, I gotta get up. There. And then we started bouncing bits. And once you're bouncing bits, you just then you really want to get up. He's itching. He's got herpes. That's the good thing about bouncing bits is nothing makes you want to get up more. Than being like, yeah, yes, yes, that's the angle. Okay, yes, exactly. Because you want to test it. You want to say, did it work? Did you, I kick? Did I crack it? You got to test. So great hang with him. Got the six a.m. flight. Had to wake up at four. Drive the whole thing back yesterday. It's cold as fuck. It's jarring. When you go to New Mexico for two days and L.A. for two uh, days, and you come into that New York winter, forget about it. You know, you get off the plane. You're kind of in a baggage claim, anal, and then you come outside and it just goes. Whoosh, when you're like, God damn, I forgot all about it. Well, and I didn't bring my coat oh! to New Mexico, which is the best move I ever made. But when you arrive back, that one minute of waiting for the yeah, cab. Yeah, yeah. And then my kooky fucking driver had his windows down. There was like snowflakes flying in me. Must have been some Russian cunt. No, Asian fella. He was ah, bundled. Wagyu. He was bundled with the windows down. So Interesting. I might actually have a story that I never told here. Oh, I, I just want to give a shout out to Asbury Park. Oh, well, that's one of my favorite places in the world. Great town, great people. I did a gig out there. Again, I'm taking all these wacky gigs. you got to stay uncomfortable. Yeah. Got to keep it weird and confuse the muscles, as they say. So I ride out with a Gabby from You Know What Dude in her, in her Jeep Cherokee, which is always fun seeing a lady in a, in a Cherokee. Dude. And she's Bon Jovi's daughter, sort of. Yeah, the yeah. Keyboard player's I tried daughter. to get into that, and she really put the wall up. Oh, build that wall. Hmm. So I wish I had a wall that went up and down, like I'm a, all up, like a limo partition. Yeah, that would be nice. You know, you could be like, I'll take it down for him and up for them. Well, you could take it down. You, a notch. You just gotta do therapy. I'm taking it down brick by brick, slowly. There you it's starting go. to come down. There you go. Uh, so we go out there, and it's a rainy night. You know, you're like, this could be weird. And uh, it wasn't a lot of money, but we get out there. It turns out it's Vinny Brand's daughter running the whole thing. Oh, I remember her. So it's at this cool brewery in Asbury Park. Vinny's there. It's packed out, sold out. Comics are all nice. And she's like, yeah, there's about 17 comics going on. So you're immediately like, gah. But it wasn't that many, and they, she she ran a hell of a show, hosted it beautifully. The crowd was bananas. Good. Really good. Hot crowd. She doubled the pay. Because it was such a great night, which is always so sweet. Then you're like, I'm glad I took it. I'm glad I like agreed to do the gig. And then uh, she got a comic to drive me all the way back home. Wow. A comic who lives in Jersey drove me back. We That's nice. Great hang on the way back. And uh, it's always good coming back because there's no traffic and it's all done and you got money and you did a show. That's how I felt in L.A. And I said this last time. I'm never not taking the 6 a.m. flight home. I know. Because I left, I, I stayed in Sherman Oaks. I left the hotel. It took me 18 minutes to get to LAX. Ooh. Nobody on the road. Just whoop. If you drive that from anywhere between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., that's a 45-minute ride. Here, here. I just shot right there. Oh, yeah. It was. I love a nice, successful, I was there for like 36 hours, saw two buddies, did one set, two podcasts, boop, 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 boop. It's all out. Locked in. And uh, Oh, a hell of a lock-in. And uh, I'll tell you this, I, I got another in my seat story. Oh, which was hit, fun. Hit me fair. I love a, an airline anal. And this one felt, well, this wasn't an airline. This was oh. no airline, my Amtrak? friend. Amtrak? Basketball game. Whoa! And Hoop. this one felt pretty good because I felt like I turned a corner and really asserted myself. Boy, you're big on the certs. Well, I'm trying to assert. That's how you take the walls down. First you assert, then you remove the bricks. Ah, uh, yes. Yellow Brick Road. So I go to the basketball tournament, as I talked about a couple episodes ago, because mm -hmm. I was supposed to do a corporate. Kobe. Corporate gets canceled. I go with Veter to go watch some college shoot. We watch the number one team in the country, Louisville, get defeated. <laughs> Big upset. It's very Spoiler. exciting. Very exciting. So we watch the game. Now, Veter's going to your show. Too many people or hot gays or whatever the hell it's good called. Good eggs. Good eggs. Thank yes. you. Hot gays is a better name than good eggs. I like hot way. gays. That's a good show. Although the show's a little misleading when Tim Dillon walks on. <laughs> <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. Yeah, he's ugly. <laughs> um, although, by the way, Tim Dillon, very handsome guy when he's not... Uh, Obese? Right. Well, when you see know. a picture when he's a kid, he looks like JTT. He's actually what? got some sexy eyes. Oh, yeah. Look up sexy Is that right? Tim Dillon. Yeah. I'll Shelby. I guess I could see Shelby. It. Oh, he's not here. Ah, uh, yeah. He left. No, he's got Tim Dillon's actually good looking. What? Look him at his kid. Right? Yes, he's All a handsome right. guy. He's just got a bunch of gay fat on him. Ah, the gay fat's the hardest to get rid of. Oh, you got that right. You got to fuck it out. It's like an avocado, you know that. It's got the gay fat. Uh, that's the good fat. Oh, right, right, yeah, right. This is bad fat. 
<laughs> this is uh, wrong in the eyes of God fat. Right. Yeah, not going to heaven fat. Yeah, you got it. But um, uh, he's a funny guy. Who, Tim Dillon? Yeah. One of the funniest guys, Super I would funny. say. Super funny. Yeah. Gay, gay and fat equals comedy. So if he wasn't funny, he'd have to kill himself. I bet this gay fat guys that are not funny. I haven't met him. You don't see a lot of fat gay guys. That's true. They're ripped. Yeah. A lot well, there's one packs. that's famous, but I think he's closeted, so I don't want to say anything Chaz about Bono? Him. No, I don't know who that is. You don't know Chaz Bono? <laughs> I don't think so. Wow. How do you miss a guy Bono. like Bono? Chaz. I know Chase Sutley and Bono, but... Put them together. Chase Bono. Yeah. People have done that quite a bit, I'm sure. He's a big, fat gay. I think he's gay. Might be trans. Oh, can I don't keep know. up. I don't know. Dylan might be trans by the time this comes out. Let's hope. You never know, but yeah, I know. He's one of the funniest people there is. So funny. And a, and a good hang and a good egg and... Yeah. And a good fat. Funny hang. And very attractive, but, uh, you know... I gotta, I gotta take another look. I, I see the the rosacea, I see the dandruff, and I see the uh, pretentious <laughs> quote, and I move on. Anywho, all right. So I'm in L.A. No, I'm at Madison Square Garden. So Veter, he leaves to go to your show because it's two games. The doubleheader, they call it. Yeah, so doubleheader. First game ends, and he goes, "All right, buddy, I'm gonna go." You know, he does that thing. Yeah, yeah. Veter leaves. <laughs> the mumble album coming out. Veter, Las Vegas. That's right. Uh, so he leaves. So now it's just me. So I go and just walk around. I can't eat any food there because I'm trying to eat healthy-ish. So I'm just walking around killing time till the next game. Now, the next game features the Yukon Huskies. Mm. I've been to Yukon games before at the Garden. Arr, it's arr, all arr, these Yukon guys. They get drunk, these like frat Yukon guys, because it's Hartford. It's close. So you get uh. New Yorkers going to that school. So you get all these like mid to late 20 drunk fucking... New uh, Englandites? Yes. Got it. Like myself. You get a lot of me, basically. Uh, you 10 I years ago. Got old. Yeah, exactly. It's, that's exactly who it is. Pre-herp. Except a little more fratty. I see. With like some beef on them. Yeah. So anyways, Wagyu. I walk around. I go back to my seat. So now it's filling in because it's all these Yukon people. I go back up to my seat, and now the first four seats in the row are open. I had seat three and four. So all four are open now. So I sit in seat three no sorry the first three seats are open seat four which is one of the seats i had mm -hmm. is taken that's veter's so seat. that's veter's seat so i sit in seat three but the guy there's a frat bro in seat four mm. so it's awkward because there's a bunch of empty seats but i want to sit in my seat yeah so i sit and he's just next to me I, again i can feel his look so uh, i start looking back frat look yeah we're exchanging looks uh -huh. then i go uh this is my. I cut him off in the pass. I go. This is my, my seat. So, <laughs> and he goes. No, I got a bunch of guys. Bunch of us are sitting all right here. There's all these coats on these seats. He's like, bunch of us are all right in here. Uh huh. And I go. You uh, got the number there, Chachi. I go. Okay. Well, uh, this is my seat, and the row behind is empty. So I go. Well, I'll move to this row, if you want, because there's nobody there. But this is my seat. Uh -huh. my, that's my seat, and this is my seat. And he goes. No. Nope. He's like row seven. And I was like, yep, row seven, seat three. Yeah, this is me. And he, go, he pulls out his ticket, which is Ooh. folded up, printed off a piece of paper. He goes, do me a favor, just check this. Ooh, do me a favor, sassy lady. So it's sassy and cunty, but I know for sure I've been sitting in this seat for two hours. I know I'm in the right seat. Wait, I know wait. seats. You've been there two hours? Yeah, yeah. because the first game. Ah, sorry. So Got I it. left in between games. So I unfold this thing. Now, I know I'm going to unfold a different seat. So I'm confident. Okay. I don't feel like that. Because I'd be a bitch if I was like, okay, I'll look at But I'm like, all right, I'll unfold your fucking ticket. So I unfold it, and sure enough, I go, yep, seat seven. Oh, So I held it like this. Zinger. Seat seven. This is four. So you're over there. Yeah, And then he is. goes, well, those guys are in our seats. Well, you deal with it, dickless. I go, I guess so, yeah. But anyway, I'm like, I'm going to move this row. But yeah, this is my seat, Ooh but whatever you got to do. And I felt good. And then I came around, sat there, and he's like, yeah, it's no problem. But yeah, we're going to... I was like, no problem. Whatever you're going to do, dude. <laughs> and it was the first time in my life I felt this. If you want to get weird, we can get weird. <laughs> yeah, you want to throw? Let's throw. I mean, I felt the thing of like, I'll fucking... I got rage. I, I, I got some training now. I'm like, whatever you want to do, we, we can do it. That's fine. The problem but is, I'll be right here. The problem is you got a, a Make-A-Wish kid with you, which is Veter. Well, Veter's gone. Oh, okay. He left. I'm alone. So now I felt pretty good because I checked his ticket. I go, I'll take this empty seat. But yeah, these, you're in my seats. And then all the frat guys start showing up. And then this guy goes, hey, we're in this guy's seat. So we got oh. to like get out because we're in his seats. Already changed his so tune. So he changes his tune a little bit. <laughs> Tommy tune. And then they start telling those guys, hey, hey, we're in those seats. And they start going, well, why don't you just sit there? And they're like, because we're in his seats. Okay. And now 
a couple more guys come. They sit behind me, and they're like kicking my seat because they're all drunk. It's all drunk. So I realize, you know, I stood my ground. I told them what's what. You won. But I don't want to watch a basketball game with 25 frat guys. I get it. So I leave the premise. I leave there. I walk around the other section. Now they got all the students over here. I walk around this other section. I'm worried about, you know, I have it in my head. I'm going to be like, if someone asks, I'm going to say, hey, there's a bunch of drunk guys over there. I'm by mm. myself. I don't want to sit with a bunch of drunk guys. No one even asks. I go up like 15 rows into the all empty seats. Nosebleed. It's not even nosebleed because it, it's not the upper deck. It's like a decent first deck okay. or whatever. First deck. Go up. No one's with any sex. So I'm, there's no way at someone, I'm just sitting in someone's seat. I throw my feet up over the seat in front of me. I got no one within a four seat radius. Put my hands up over my head and I enjoy that second basketball Ooh-wee. game. And I'm feeling confident that I stood my ground yes. over there. Told that guy what's what. He changed his tune. Yeah, he did. I was ready for a situation. Went and got my own seat. Sat there. Enjoyed the ball game. Hell of a ball game. Felt pretty good. See, let me throw out a few nuggets here. Stick some things in my ass. Denver Nugget. That is very mature of you. You know, yeah, you stood your anal, but and you won, but the guy turned his anal on you, which is nice. And you could have stayed there, but you said, I'm just going to be mature. I don't even want to deal with this, even though you already dominated. Right. And then you left on your own terms. It became a thing. Yeah, my terms. I like my terms because I'm like, but I don't want to sit here. Right. So it felt like I asserted again in life. And that, like, Ah. I'm like, why would I sit here? It's going to suck. Yeah, because some people have this pride bullshit where they go, no, 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 this is my seat. But but now your life is worse. Yeah. And I'm like, why would I want to sit with a bunch of drunk fucking numbskulls? Right. I'll just sit by myself over here. Man. And it was quite delightful. So, did it feel tense with the? Because uh, the uh, hey, do do me a favor and read this. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty cunty. It was tense, uh, but I felt like I'm like, well, it's gonna end with him being like, oh shit, yeah, you're right. Did he I, ever did, say that? You, you're, oh shit, you're right. Yeah, well, he did. Like, oh, okay, so I'm over here. Oh, those guys are in our seat. Yeah, and then he was like, hey, we gotta get them to move, like, because he's a fucking bitch. This guy. Uh-huh. He just had. He knew he had his buddies coming. Uh huh. But I just felt like I got all this rage that I'm working on. But That's, I was like, I had that thing of like, if I, it's not gonna work out well for you. Right, right. I could see that he was a fucking little rich penis. Oh, uh, coming down. Yep. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Two honkers. Yeah, decent. And two seat changes, by the way. You know your goddamn seat. You got your seat tattooed right on your fucking noggin. Well, I think it's also like I don't booze, and I go to a lot of flights and a lot of. Sh- Games, uh, a lot of shit. I know the seat. First of all, I've never understood the fucking up the seat. Right. I don't get it. Section two ten. You find your section, you row your seat. I, it's like so insane to me. Well, it's an honest mistake. You know, there's a lot of numbers, there's a lot of letters going on. But what what bugs me are these people who walk down the aisle. This this the fucking plane goes from A one to thirty six A. Yeah. And they're going. What the hell? It goes one, two, three, four. What's, right. the, what's the big hubbub? Yeah. Go, ah, ah, well, uh, I'm like, it's, it, what's it? The ticket says 10, the seat says 10. Sit your fat ass down. It's incredible. There's like cartoons too. Like the C has a guy next to it. Right. And then the fucking A has a window next yes, to it. Yes, exactly. It's weird. And they're like, oh, I don't know. They're looking up like the sky is falling. And it's like, hey, you chooch. Read the card. But I feel the same way at sporting events. And it's one thing if you have nosebleeds, you try to sneak to good seats. And you're like, oh, you got us. Right. It's the thing of like, no, no, this is my seat right here. And yeah. you're like, no, you're in section 309. This is 427. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's like, how did, what the, f- I think people literally come up the escalator and they just walk in. They walk, yeah. And then they're like, okay, I'm row five. They skipped the section part. Right. Or they skipped the row part. I don't know what it is, but well, it's all labeled. But I hate to sound like a queef, and I, this is going to make me sound horrible, but all those little things in life where you're worried about it constantly and then you find it, they don't have that worry. Why do we worry so much and they don't? Right. I'm a little jealous. Like, you know when you're walking off a plane and it takes forever because you have to wait for everybody to get out of their row, then they come out of their row, then they turn and grab their shit, then they grab their shit. So it's not just like a smooth, watery leave. It's all this jumbly bullshit. But then when I finally get my chance to go, I go, whoop, I pull the bag off yeah. and one felt swoop, mm-hmm. felt swoop. Felt, yeah. Like the fabric? Like a swoop of felt, yeah. Okay, one felt swoop, and then I'm out of there. But everybody else is going, oh, hang on, oh, let me put that down there, let me pull the handle up, and let me wipe my asshole, and let me wipe the smeg on my sock, and then they're out of there. Two things. One, A, we're considerate, that's mm. why. And two, B, is there a leather swoop 
Or is it just the felt swoop? I think it's just felt. Can you get a swoop in leather? Or, or, can you get a, or a flannel swoop? <laughs> I love a flannel swoop. Uh, that's bigger than dyke pills. One flannel swoop. Please. Get a Subaru and a Brandy Carlisle ticket and a, and a flannel swoop. I'll take a felt swoop and a uh, juice soup. Juice soup, felt swoop. Ah. Uh-huh. That's fun. Title. Folks, uh, we fucked up. I'm just going to give it to them straight. Uh, maybe we'll keep it all in. I'm going to give them the straight dope. Please. We fucked up. Give we started straight, reading ads, so we had to edit here. But we're wrapping up now. But we just read nine ads. It's a little kooky. So there was a cut there. You might have noticed. It's the holiday time. Forgive us. It's the holiday season. Yeah. Silver bells. Silver bells. Folks, I am coming to Madison. Oh. Madison, Connecticut. Madison, no. <laughs> Fairfield, Connecticut, January 11th. Uh-huh. And then Madison, Wisconsin, January 16th through the 18th. And I'm doing little uh, fat black shows, January 20, 12th and 26th. They're late, though, 11 p.m. I don't Ooh. know who's coming to those. I know. It's going to be tough. Yeah, it's going to be a late, annoying Sunday night. And then the guy before you goes long, so you'll be starting at 11.40. Oh, fuck me hard. All right, and then uh, Omaha, Funny Bone. People keep asking me about Omaha. February 6th through the 8th. Uh, February 6th through the 8th, Omaha. Sorry, these are all fucked up. February 27th through 29th, Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase. And then March is a big month. Hyenas in Plano, Texas. Oh, Plano. I heard that one's tough. Plain, yes. Comics in Mohegan Sun, the 12th through the 14th. And Skankfest, March uh, 27th through the 29th. And uh, Belly Room, L.A., Comedy Store, March 16th. Nice. What's going on in there? She's queefing. <laughs> um, and then... Uh, I'm coming back to Worcester, too. woo ha ha April 17th and 18th, Patriots Day weekend. So oh, boy. Oh those boy. are all things. Uh, when, when This is mid-January. We're, this is we're January talking. 7th. This is coming up. Right? All right. Yuck Yucks in Vancouver. Come on. I'm finally going to Vancouver. The mix is shut down, so say hello, Tampa. Uh, going home to see my parents. La Jolla. Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Might have a big drop in by a famous <laughs> Jewish man. Louis. St. Louis. <laughs> Mini, uh, bah, 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 bah. Detroit, Michigan. Comedy Castle. Um, Zanies in Nashville. Atlanta. All kinds of fun stuff. Eventually, Chicago. Going to Dynasty Typewriter in LA. Moon Tower. Des Moines. Wichita. Kansas. Omaha. One Nighters. Chicago. Calgary. Tempe. Finally, Philadelphia. Uh, Boston eventually, Cleveland, all kinds of fun stuff. MarkNormanComedy.com. Comedian Joe List. Comedian Joe List. Dot com. Uh, kill yourselves. Have a happy holidays. Uh, what is yeah. it? Dry January is a thing. People uh, do. It is for me. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Eat out your <laughs> grandmother true. and, uh, you know, finger your uncle. Suck my dick. Queep. Thank you.